Hello everybody, welcome back to Divinity Original Sin, the Enhanced Edition. So we're back where we were at the end of the last episode. Um, we're about to go to the temple, I think, if I remember correctly, what we're about to do. Uh, let's have a quick quest. Yeah, we follow the wizard, we know where we're up to with that. We need to sort out, really, Hunter's Edge now. We've cleared out the wizard's friends from underneath the uh, Zandalore's house, or wherever it was, behind the rock in the cellar. We got rid of those. They have now escaped. We've got all the people primed, ready to be, well, the orcs ready to be massacred, hopefully. But we just need to instigate the final part of that, which is why I go into the temple and discovering who stole the bloodstones. One thing I want to do before that, though... I'd nearly forgotten about this quest. It came to me while we are offline. Talk to this lady here. You there. Tell me, how's your vision? Any ailments in the liver or spleen? Lost ones are everywhere these days, after all. I can't remember if we actually talked to this lady before, but I'm not going to go through the conversation with her. All I want to do is this. And that is by this small bone totem. Thank you. And I'm sure I'll get my 506 gold back after I kill you later. <laughs> right. That is to do with the quest for... Um, what's, what's the name again? I can't remember. Charler and Harton. The two merchants. that uh, One's in the beach. In outside Side Seal, where the orcs were, the skeleton merchant, and one which is outside Hunter's Edge here. It's linked to a quest with those. So we'll, we'll sort that out later, actually. First of all, we need to get Wolgraf to see some of these bloodstains. I think he's already done it once. Wolgraf spotted something. Yeah, there we go. We spotted the blood under the door, so let's go out there. And follow the blood stains. Wolgraf spotted There we go, another one there. I suppose I should really leave with Wolgraf. That makes it a lot easier. Wolgraf spotted There we go. <laughs> let's just check these side areas in case Wolgraf there's a... Oh, look at that! I'm so glad that I did that. What have we got here? Uh, we don't reckon have that. Oh, God, another shield. Um, okay, we'll take that. We'll take that. Okay. Nothing too exciting, but at least we found it. Wolgraf spotted something. There we go. And it's auto-saving. We know what that means if, it, if the game does that. Wolgraf spotted something. mountain apes Your kind not welcome. Go. Um, I think I'd rather fight them, you know. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't want to mess about. Might as well kill them now. Save the uh, mountain men having to come down here and kill them. Uh, well, what shall we do? Let's intimidate. Okay, let's hope they win. Damn it! <laughs> Uh, what can you tell him about the temple? We do not inspect. We only guard. Brother Gorag has selected this place for his own special purpose. And so we stand. So why do you stand guard here? Brother Gorag has beckoned us to stay. A terrible thing to lose a horn. Now the old mother will never select him for her chosen. Okay, I'll take my leave. Thank you. Can we? Um, 
I wonder. No. Damn it. Alright, okay, we'll have to kill them at the end. Wargrave spotted something. There we go, more blood. Wargrave spotted something. I need to dry off. Wargrave spotted something. What trickery is this? It vanished. And yet. All right, let's do that. They're just coming back down to do it. And we have a little chest. Ends at this great. If blood loss didn't kill the sorry fellow, surely the fall did. That's the knight's tomb beneath here. I guess it'll be more than one mystery we uncover within its depths. Uh, yes, it will be, probably. All gruff. Um. Oh, 37. Let's take those. Turn that to a door. Well, they are much better. Let's send those to a door for a second. Combine. Turn back to Roderick. And equip. Oh, look at that one identified. No, losing intelligence and perception there, so no, let's try that to Scarlet. There, no, right, sort out that. Seventy four, one movement, music to cursed, music to muted. Um, ah, I can go back to Roderick, that. Right, where were we? Need that last lever. Oh, I'll take those. Check out these vases. Nothing there. Titan there you go, we can actually read that. Exegeter. Where none shall pass the Titan Cast. That's because we got the, the book from the Zandalor's house. Uh, another waypoint, which is nice. Um, right, get to the bottom of these stairs. Oh, there we go. Auto save. That's very nice. Because we might have to reload. Depending how this goes, I don't particularly want to fight these dudes. The big stone statues. I suppose we could if need be, but I don't really want to. Zoft! If I said bitter fuss! Uh, translation, uh... <laughs> reason, let's try reason, it's probably going to fail. Oh, no, it won. What can you tell me about this tomb? 
dertër thas, dërë thëks, grill i gji dërë të lufor, dërë në dërë dhëksuar. Oro thas, lëngës vi prëks të lëgjë mërdu, dreks fërë venos, vinë vë dërën. Okay, I'll take my leave. Log updated. War of the Stones. Oh, and we've got Cordelia as well. There we go. Right, one thing we must check first. Perception 11. Ideal. Alright, get them on the stairs. First of all, send. Send to Wolgraf. Right, Wolgraf, let's do your stuff with your high perception. Wolgraf spotted something. Wolgraf spotted something. Follow all the footsteps. Wolgraf spotted something. Wolgraf spotted something. Wolgraf spotted something. Wolgraf spotted something. Wolgraf right, spotted there something. There we go. Oh, wrong one. It's heating up. Send that back to Roderick. And we should be safe from here on. Let's get on the right person, shall we? Broken off horn on a letter from Garrick. Read. An orcish horn. Jarl was right. The orcs were involved in Garrick's disappearance. There uh, is the update we need. Mean, which means the bloodstones were likely stolen at Grutilda's behest. Yes, they were indeed. Right. There's not an imp in sight. Patience. One could turn up at any moment. Perhaps they're even listening as we speak. They may be clever, but they aren't invisible. Let me check around here, make sure we've not missed anything. I don't think we have. Okay, right. We're about to have a discussion about the imps, I do believe. Let's get it you over and there. done with. Where are the red imps hiding? Don't play stupid. We know the cowards jumped to this realm. Easy, sister, easy. We wouldn't want to scare off a possible ally. Ah, uh, why are you seeking the imps? We of the Watch share little with those ruddy chattel. But we do serve a common master. The demons of the realm of Nemesis. We've been tasked with returning the savage renegades to their home plane. Savage renegades? Why do you refer to the imps as such? I know not what guise of innocence they have undertaken here, but in our home realm theirs is a sinister past. Eons ago the red imps were a free race. Clever, yes, but blinded by their thirst for knowledge. Easier prey our demon masters could not have crafted, and so the imps were offered a deal. Knowledge for service. The demons would offer the imps unlimited knowledge of the universe, and in turn the imps would work off this debt by the sweat of their brows. The imps, salivating at such an idea as absolute knowledge, agreed without a second thought, and each signed his name into a great codex marking his commitment. Knowledge they were granted, yes, but at a great cost. 
They could only use their newfound abilities in service of the demons of Nemesis. So the imps dealt with demons, one might call them misguided, were highly savage. No. Wait until you are all that stands between an imp and its freedom. See how quickly impish charm turns to barbarism. We, the Watch, were made the overseers of the demon's impish slaves. We were kinder than the demons indeed, but suffered from the same servitude as those over whom we were given dominion. Whatever commands the demons issued, we had no choice but to enforce. After a great many centuries, the imps crafted a plan. They would steal the codex by which they had signed over their lives and flee Nemesis forever. But to get to the codex, they had to go through us. The imps were merciless. Countless innocents among the watch were beaten, bloodied, ripped apart limb by limb as a savage red swarm ran through us. Steal the codex they did, leaving the shredded innards of those who opposed them in their wake. Uh, you can't really blame the imps for wanting to escape enslavement. And what of us? We of the Watch who had failed in protecting the Codex were shown no mercy by our overlords. Half were sent to the darkest dungeon cells of Nemesis where they would suffer eternal torment. The other half, well, we were given a task. Find the imps and all would be forgiven. Those cast into the dungeons would be released. Fail and we will be doomed to join them. Okay, I can understand where you're coming from, that you need to find the imps to release your people. But you give the excuse that all baddies give, that you were forced to do it, and you had no choice but to obey, so I'm not going to help you. No, no, not at all. I'll take my leave, thank you, bye. There we go, new log entry. The watch is coming, there we go. I really don't want to side with those. Inert stone, thank you. It's very nice. And it looks like we've got a new room. So rather than run all the way back, let's go to the end of time, see the new room, and then go back to Hunter's Edge. There you both are, how jolly. I always do prefer an audience when I give one of my history lessons. My friends, I see you found another star stone. Jolly good of you. But I haven't been exactly idle either, for I think I may have nearly figured out why Sauce became so terribly tainted. If Astarte is the goddess of the Sauce, and the void was contained in her very garden, might it stand to reason that it was, in fact, the Void who turned Source into such a dark and terrible power? But the tapestry has been rewoven. Time has been restored. I must speculate no more, and instead we must see what new shred of our tale you've uncovered. With the Guardians distracted, Astarte lifted the lid of the God Box. What she saw... was nothingness. Astarte had called forth the Void Dragon, whose sole purpose was to undo all creation. Caught off guard and terrified, the Guardians' sworn protectors fled. But Astarte stood firm. She grabbed hold of the dragon and hurled it and herself into the reaches of the void. Here she battled the dragon for all eternity. For his deception, the trife was cast out of the first creation. He fell to wriggle on a monstrous creature unworthy of the realm of the gods. Since that terrible day, Source has been tainted by the presence of the void. A once beautiful power has become corrupted, and those attempting to wield it often go mad in the process. Okay. 
A bit more of our story revealed. Oh, looks like we need to have a word with Scarlet. We may have been tricked into allowing Astarte to open the God Box, but we fled when faced with the Void once more. Uh, what cowards we were, let us only pray we still have time to undo our mistakes. Um. Hmm. No, let's go to the top one. Who wouldn't have fled from such a terrible sight? Who could blame us for that? Uh, no one in the right mind. This mess falls squarely on the trash shoulders, not ours. No one in their right mind. This mess falls squarely on the trife's shoulders, not ours. Uh, forgiving. There we go. We forgived ourselves. <laughs> uh, right, okay. Is that all we need to do? Have we got another room opened? Uh, he's not there, so we've got another room. It's just a case of which one. Not that way. Or is it? Nope, let's try this way. Ah, this could be it. Yeah. Seafaring atmosphere about this place. And seafaring leads to the exotic, to trading. We may be in for a treat. Oh, okay. Right, nothing exciting there. Guardians. Oh, guardians, I need you. Heed my plea in these void filled hours. The dragon is overpowering me. Our enemies are battering the fragile gates of time. The skies are darkening, and the stars are being extinguished. You have to reach me. Star stones will pave the way. Find them, use them, empower them, and hurry. Please make haste. Okay. Only Starstone can stay the Maelstrom now. Alas, that damnable stuff is hidden better than a leprechaun's pot of gold. Okay. Well, look at these floaty things. Mysterious stranger, hello. Ah, fancy finding you here. It's such a very small series of worlds after all. <laughs> fancy meeting me here? What business could you possibly have at the end of time? If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. I'm just tidying up a bit, ensuring that all's running smoothly. Every gear well oiled, every cog in its place. Nothing special. Okay. And um, you got through that here, of all places? Well, why not? It's an interesting sort of place, isn't it? And speaking of interesting sorts of places, you must have seen some fantastic things on your journey so far. Uh, choices. Yes, it's been a parade of magic, mayhem, mystery from top to bottom. Indeed, but through it all, I find myself longing for a quiet life away from all this madness. You'd think so, but to my mind, the whole affair would rather run of the mill. Okay, now I'll go for the top one. The mysterious stranger gives you a hard look, as though trying to discern something deep within your eyes. After a moment or two, he appears suddenly satisfied and slowly blinks. Okay. And off he goes again. Empty. Can we take these or is it stealing? No, we can take them. Ancient letter. Oh, it's one of the general's updates. Is it? No. All right, hello, Brian. Welcome, welcome, step right up. Browse these fine goods from far-flung fairy worlds and local slums the same. 
Take your time or don't. Time is meaningless after all. Tell me about yourself. Oh, it seems like an eternity ago. Or was it a thousand years from now? Huh. I was a simple market peddler on the cobbled streets of Alaroth. It was Master Six Sex himself who passed one long or possibly very short summer by teaching me both the art and science of rift hopping. And I've been trooping to and fro across space and time ever since. Okay, show me what you have. Today's special Zeppelin Navigation Crystals. Let's have a look if there's anything interesting. Large invisibility portion. Don't need that. Backpack, don't need that. Two hander. That will two intelligence, two speed. Mm, no, two perception, three initiative. That's quite good. Magic needle and thread. Let's take that. Not come across any swirling mud while well, we've been on our travels, and I do believe we need for a recipe. I'll take that, that will do for the time being. I'll take my leave. Okay. I am maiden. Do we need to kill that? Nah, I don't think so. So is the north page here for the for the general's quest? The ancient letter. Did he read that? Yeah, he did. Let's have a quick look over here. In case I missed it. These rooms do tend to normally have an update for the general's quest. Oh, missed that nearly. So a quick check. Nope. Oh, log update. Okay. Aye, aye, Captain. Fly straight to the void. A bit drafty in here, isn't it? To the void. All right, you have very annoying voices, little imps. We are going to leave you. Phantom Forest, Hunter's Edge. Right, so before we go and talk to the Jarl, I think it would be wise to get the Orcs drunk. So at next episode, We can start the fight between the orcs and the mountain men. I could do with a cold drink. I've got my eye on Oh, is it right? Hello, Herschel. Need to talk to you. What can I do you for? Uh, so you're a purveyor of whiskey, are you? That I am. But I'll tell you, I never served a lot quite like these Goliaths. They drink like elephants and pay like... Well, they don't pay at all. Then again, I can't say I mind this little arrangement too terribly. The happier they are, the longer I evade the rack and the screw. Each glass brings us closer to the last of the whiskey, though. My bowels shrink when I think what'll happen when we get to the bottom of the last barrel. We've already exhausted the tavern supply, but I've been pilfering from my old buddy Glen Stores. I doubt he'll mind, seeing as he was one of the first orcs sunk their claws into. Now that was a man dedicated to fine liquor. <laughs> Knew all there was to know about distilling whiskey, he did. Oh, oh what I'd give for a barrel of Glen's good stuff now. <laughs> These orcs wouldn't know what hit them. 
I've got a batch of aged whiskey right, aged whiskey right here, and what's more, I'll serve it to these orcs. Let's have a look. Well, I'll be Gratilda's great and Gretchen. Single malt, aged thirty years. It seems my old pal glenied away his finest spirits for a rainy day. A shame to wear something so fine on them. But something this delectable ought to put them in a more gentle spirit. Well, let's what about the armory key? I can't say I know a thing about the armory, but I'll say bringing the occasional flag into the guards there. But I've delivered a drink from barracks to bridge in the course of my work. Well, I thought we win it. No, we didn't. Never mind. What? You propose I'll escape? Uh, there we go. The must be and there we go. You. They're all drunk. A particularly rare batch of whiskey, uh, first. Right, let us get outside and prepare for the battle ahead. So that will bring us to the end of this episode, folks. The next episode we shall go into the Jarl's place there, speak to him and initiate the combat. So let's look forward to that, eh? A bit of combat. We didn't have, have any this episode. So don't forget, if you do like anything and you do want to see any more of uh, Da Vinci Original Sin, let me know in the comments below. This is Old Grace signing off.